What's up guys, back with another Bible study, still in the book of Revelation, Revelation 12. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars, and she was with child, and she cried out being in labor and in pain to give birth. So what do we have here? The woman, the woman represents Israel. The crown of 12 stars represents the 12 sons of Israel. We see here in Genesis 37 verse 9, uh, this is a dream Joseph had. Said now he had still another dream and related it to his brothers and said, Lo, I have I have had still another dream, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars were bowing down to me, and he is the twelfth star in that uh dream being a son of Israel, a son of Jacob, which is Israel. One of the twelve stars. Now this is a literal sign that occurred in September 2017. Never happened before. May have happened one time I, I didn't uh, go back and use the program as deep as a lot of other people did so I don't know exactly but it, it may have some people believe it happened one time around the creation of Adam and Eve and one time around the birth of Jesus and we see what is described in the scripture it says and then there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun we see the sun at her shoulder and the woman there's only one woman this this could be if it's a sign in heaven with the sun moon and stars there's only one woman it can be and that's the constellation virgo woman clothed with the sun we see the sun here with the moon at her feet And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now most of these are norm normally here in the constellation Leo. But this particular day, these three other stars, Mercury, Mars, and Venus, wandering stars, lined up to form a crown of twelve stars. At the same time, she was being clothed with the sun and the moon at her feet. A sign that just, it doesn't happen. It was fulfillment of prophecy. And it was a warning sign that the end is soon near, that the birth is soon near. It was a warning sign that what we're about to see in the rest of this chapter is at the door. And actually, as we see here in Jeremiah 3, God talks to his people and refers to his people in relationships, relationship language. We're the bride of Christ. We're currently engaged to him, about to be married back into covenant fully with God. And we see here in Jeremiah 3, 8, and I saw that for all the adulteries of faithless Israel, I had sent her away and given her a writ of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah, which is the tribe of Judah with Benjamin, 
did not fear, which is the Jews. But she went and was a harlot also. And we see here in Second Corinthians eleven two, for I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, for I betrothed you to one husband, or engaged you to one husband, so that to Christ I might present you as a pure virgin. And also we see here in Zechariah nine. And the Lord their God will save them in that day as the flock of his people. For they are as stones of a crown. Stones of a crown. And the stones, I believe that is referring to the 144,000. We're back here to Revelation 12. So we have the woman, we have this sign that happened in September 2017. And what I didn't mention is before this alignment occurred, uh, Jupiter, which is known as the king planet, went into the womb area here of Virgo and and went around back and forth for nine months and then came out uh, right around the time of this sign representing the birth and the birth says so she cried out being in labor and in pain to give birth the birth is the resurrection and rapture We see this throughout the scriptures. First Thessalonians 5 For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there's peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. See, whenever we see these labor pains and the prophecies, it's referring to the resurrection, which is also the rapture because it happens basically at the same time. And that's when the day of the Lord begins, as we see, for the day of the Lord will come like a thief while pe people are saying peace and security, then sudden destruction, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman. That's the resurrection at the beginning. And we also see that here, the resurrection at the beginning, because it says, Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she gave birth to a boy. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Can a land be born in one day? Can a nation be brought forth all at once? As soon as Zion travailed, she also brought forth her sons. Shall I bring to the point of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Or shall I give, or shall I who gives delivery shut the womb? He's only going to delay so long. And then the uh, baby has to be born. And we see a couple of references here. Uh, with a woman in labor, Isaiah 13. They will be terrified. Pains and anguish will take hold of them. They will writhe like a woman in labor. They will look at one another in astonishment. Their faces aflame. Isaiah 21, verse 3. For this reason my loins are full of anguish. Pains have seized me like the pains of a woman in labor. I am so bewildered I cannot hear. I am so terrified I cannot see. See, this... Is the day that God has spoken of. This. Is the day of destruction. This. Is the day of death. 
for many, many people. And the day of salvation for the few. Also here in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 4. And also Jeremiah 6. Verse, verse 24. We, we have heard the report of it. Our hands are limp. Anguish has seized us. Pain is as a woman in child childbirth. The report of uh, the invasion. And we also see it here in Micah four. It says now, why do you cry out loudly? Is there no king among you? This is speaking about modern day Israel. Why do you cry out loudly? Is there no king among you? Or has your counselor perished? The agony has gripped you like a woman in childbirth. Writhe and labor to give birth, give birth, daughter of Zion, like a woman in childbirth. For now you will go out of the city, dwell in the field, and go to Babylon. There you will be rescued. There the Lord will redeem you from the hand of your enemies. And this is a interesting scripture right here. I'm going to go back to that in a minute. But back to Revelation 12. So we see the woman here in labor to give birth which is the resurrection and rapture then another sign appeared in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and on his heads were seven crowns and the dragon is the devil and the seven heads it has seven heads and ten crowns or ten horns uh, just like the beast which the seven heads represent uh, seven kingdoms uh, seven world kingdoms and the horns the ten leaders and his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth so so when this happens Satan convinced a third of a third of the angels or is convincing a third of the angels to rebel against God and his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth because they're following behind him his tail and the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when she might give birth or so that when she gave birth he might devour her child and she gave birth to a son a male child who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron and we see that here in revelation it, it, it's also said about King Yeshua but we see her in Revelation 2 he who overcomes and he who, keep, who keeps my deeds until the end to him I will give authority over the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and her child was caught up to God and to his throne see there, there's the rest Resurrection. Then the woman, the woman is giving birth to the child because we are children of Israel. The Bible says we're children of Abraham through faith. And we're grafted in to the house of Israel as believers in Messiah. 
So the woman is Israel, not the modern day state of Israel, not ancient Israel, just Israel. That's what God calls his people, Israel. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God so that there she would be nourished for 1,260 days. Now, the woman fleeing into the wilderness, I believe, is what we see here. Mark 13, 14, 14 through 19. But when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it should not be, let the reader understand. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. The one who is on the housetop must not go down or get anything out of his house, and the one who is in the field must not turn back to get his coat. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. But pray that it may not happen in the winter. For in those days it will be a time of tribulation such as it has not occurred since the beginning of the creation which God created until now and never will. So the fleeing into the wilderness, I believe, is Judah, which is the Jews, modern day Israel, fleeing at the at the abomination of desolation. Now this I gotta study a little bit more into this before I say any of this for sure, but it, I've, I just found this interesting. It says, for now, you will go out of the city. Just like we see in, uh, I told them to flee, flee out of the city. It says, dwell in the field. It says, and go to Babylon. There you will be rescued. And... There's another another scripture here. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will br it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness. Now, first off, the wilderness we see here. This is, and this is what caught my attention to to begin with. It says the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God. And if you do a word search on wilderness, and go to the book of Revelation. The only other place we see wilderness, other than Revelation 12 right here, is Babylon. And and he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, full of blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. And as we're going to see... A little bit further down, it says two wings of a great eagle were given to the woman so that she could fly into the wilderness to her place. So, so the woman, which is modern day Israel, those who, I believe, those who f heed the warning of Jesus Christ and flee at the abomination of desolation are going to be given two wings of a great eagle so that she could fly into the wilderness which may be referring to Babylon we also see right here in Isaiah 43 behold I will do something new now it will spring forth Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness. 
rivers and the desert. The beasts of the field will glorify me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I have given waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself will declare my praise. And the jackals and ostriches, well, we see that here in Isaiah 34 when referring to Edom, which is a type of Babylon the Great. And also here in Jeremiah 50, which is about Babylon. It says, Therefore the desert creatures will live there along with the jackals. The ostriches will also live in it. And it will never again be inhabited or dwelt in from generation to generation. And we have the jackals and ostriches mentioned here in Isaiah 43 in reference to the wilderness. And God providing water for his people in the wilderness. Because the Bible says no one's no one passes through no one's gonna pass through Babylon again. Let's see. Babylon will never be inhabited again. But we see this. So I believe possibly um, the woman, which is Judah, moder which is the Jews, modern day Israel. I believe possibly they're flown over to a burning Babylon to be protected during the tribulation time. chapter uh, verse 7 so this is what happens at the same time as the birth as the same time as the resurrection and the rapture Satan is cast down there's a war in heaven verse 7 and there was war in heaven Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon the dragon and his angels waged war and they were not strong enough and there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old who is called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of, our, accuser of our brethren has been cast down. He who accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. For this reason rejoice, O, he o heavens, and you who dwell in them. And you who dwell in them, which at this point is going to be all truly born born again believers who are ready. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. So when the devil is cast down, that's when we... Here in heaven, 
the praises. Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. And where else do we see that? Chapter 7, Revelation chapter 7. After these things I looked and behold a great multitude, which no one could count from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white, clo white robes, and palm branches were in their hands. And they cry out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. So at the same time, at the same time the devil and his angels are cast down to the earth, we see the great multitude in heaven. Salvation to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And also, we see the same thing here in Revelation chapter 19. After these things I looked in or after these things, I heard something like a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God because his judgments are true and righteous. And we get another detail right here of what else happens at the same time. For he has judged the great harlot who was corrupting the earth with her immorality, which is Babylon. And when the dragon saw that he was thrown down to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. So that's why that's why he said, when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it not be, should not be. When you see the abomination of desolation flee. He said, don't, don't go back for your coat. Don't go back into your house. If you're in the field or even on the, on the roof of your house, don't even go back into your house for a coat because it's that serious. Because when the dragon's thrown down, he persecutes the woman, which is the Jews. Who gave birth, those who are living in Judea, like Yeshua said. Who gave birth to the male child. But the two wings of a great eagle were given to the woman. So that she could fly into the wilderness, into her place. Where she was nourished for a time, times, and half a time. From the presence of the serpent. And the serpent poured out water like a river out of his mouth after the woman. And we know water, as we see in Revelation seventeen fifteen. And he said to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. And the serpent poured out water like a river out of his mouth after the woman, so that he might cause her to be swept away with the flood. So he sent uh, armies. The devil is going to send armies after Israel. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened his mouth and drank up the river which the dragon poured out of his mouth. Just like the story of Korah, when the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them whole, so there's going to be a great earthquake and swallow up this army that's sent after Israel at this time. 
So the dragon was enraged with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her children. Which is, that's going to be the foolish virgins as we see over here in Matthew 25. And while they were going away to make the purchase, this is the foolish virgins because they didn't have oil in their lamp. They weren't walking in the spirit. They were walking in sin. They were walking according to the ways of the world and not being set apart to God. They weren't ready. And here comes the shout. That at midnight there was a shout, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. But they weren't ready. And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came. That's Jesus. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast. And the door was shut. Later the other virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Be on the alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour. So the rest of the children are those who had the door shut on them, those who weren't ready, those who, those believers who, who now, who now keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus, but at the time they weren't ready. At the time they didn't have oil in their lamp. It's only a matter of time. We've been seeing all the signs. Luke 21 verse 25 says, There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars, and on earth and dismay among nations and perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, which is people. Men fainting from the fear and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. And that's when he comes in the clouds. So Revelation 12, we get a picture, another picture, another perspective of what happens that day. Revelation 12, we get the resurrection, which includes the rapture. At the same time, the dragon and his angels are being cast out of heaven. So, we replace them. Hallelujah. Thanks for tuning in. Love you guys. Shalom.